Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's some of you new man's word of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Repeat Remake, Sissel's Path. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you were up, and let's go. Yeah, we're doing that really creepy scene with the remnant. Being weirdly nice to Sissel. It's weird, anyway. Follow me. Wait! Okay. Sissel gaped and watched as the creature limped quietly down the forest trail and disappeared. Something told him that he shouldn't follow strange creatures into strange places. Hell, he could just be hallucinating all this after crying so much earlier today. But the thing mentioned knowing something about his mother. Sissel took a deep breath and stood up. He knew Bradley Woods like the back of his hand anyway. What's the harm in taking a look? The thing that called itself the Remnant. It's a depressing name though, so just call me Remy or something. Led him to a familiar sight in the woods. The creature beckoned him excitedly before ducking into the ruined cabin, the ruined cabin's low door frame. Sissel followed it with a doubtful frown. He's lived in this broken down cabin for most of his life and was familiar with almost everything in here. What was this Remy trying to show him? It began digging around in a dark corner of the cluttered room like a dog scavenging for a treat. Bits of rotting wood were flung in the air. Sissel flicked away a wood chip stuck in his fur before peering over Remy's shoulder curiously. The creature suddenly gurgled triumphantly through a mouthful of wood. Aha! Here we are! Sissel was startled to see Remy standing up with a scratched-up VHS tape in its mouth. It grinned at him before dropping into its hand, into its hands. Dropping it into his hands. Sissel wrinkled his nose at the spit-covered tape and wiped it on his pant leg. Oh. That's cool art. What? What is this supposed to be? Do you not know what a VHS is? Man, kids these days. Sissel held the smelly tape at arm's length and scowled. I didn't exactly grow up in a technology-filled household. Am I supposed to stick it in a TV or something? The creature nodded its head, almost as if to say, well, duh. I doubt this whole thing works anymore, and where would I even find a VHS player around here? All the tech junk in this cabin is broken to hell and back anyway. Remy laughed and tapped its legs on the wooden floor excitedly. That's not the problem. Sissel gaped in astonishment. The aged surface of the tape shifted and renewed itself, right under his fingertips. The pieces of the smashed-up television set on the cottage floor scuttled together like ants returning to a colony. Shards of plastic and metal slid into place and formed what looked like a brand new TV. Sissel ran his hands across its surface, mesmerized. Wow! You can make you can make things like new again. This old thing has been lying on the corner for years. It's kind of weird seeing it in one piece. The remnant tapped the TV with its chin and, old, and the old static screen flickered to life. <laughs> Play that tape! You'll find what you are truly looking for in its contents. Sissel hesitated, feeling rather apprehensive. What was he looking for? The tape in his hand suddenly felt very frightening. But then again, what did he have to lose? Herschel already hated him for his fuck-up and he was back in this, mu this muggy old cottage. Sissel took a deep breath before inserting the tape into the VHS set and pressed the play button. The screen started and shook his gears and the television clicked into place and groaned to life. Sissel stared intently as the static rolled by, trying to make out something in the mess of shapes. I'm uh, working. His ears perked up at the sounds of a young but familiar voice. Is this thing working? Thump. Herschel, don't hit it. You're going to break the darn thing. The static of the screen suddenly cleared itself, followed by a triumphant shout. Aha! I got it to work, though, didn't I? It is all fine. Oh. oh. S Smile for the camera, sis. Got any memorable words uh, as a brand new mom? Cecilia Bradley stared awkwardly into the camera while busying herself with a small baby in her arms. She looked fatigued but happy as she gently rocked her arms in a, sooth in a soothing rhythm. Look, it's a baby. I made it myself. Herschel snorted as he zoomed in on the baby's face. He cooed softly as the baby sniffled quietly at his, eh, quietly at his, at the noise. It's like, you know, it is water time. Okay. He cooed softly as the baby sniffled at the noise. He's so cute! How did an ugly old lady like you make such an adorable kid? How gorgeous, thank you very much, and so is my kid. He obviously gets all his good traits from me. After all, his father... Cecilia was abruptly silent, her shoulders sinking into a tired slump. Herschel lowered the camera slightly and reached over to pat her back. Hey, sis, you alright? I know you're still going through some shit. That asshole dumped you at the worst possible time. Oh. 
The baby suddenly let out a small squeak and reached his tiny hands to hold Cecilia's finger, as if to comfort her. His hands looked ridiculously tiny in comparison. Cecilia's eyes softened as she brushed her baby's head softly before kissing him on the nose. Aw, aren't you the sweetest little thing? She looked up to Herschel with a soft, bittersweet smile. He's so precious, isn't he? Her voice cracked for a moment and she closed her eyes tightly. Herschel, I'm scared. Hmm? Scared of what? Of this. Of being a mom. You know how our parents were? I don't even know how a real mom is supposed to act. But what if I mess this up? This little guy deserves better than what we got. The room was silent for a long minute. Cecilia lowered her gaze to, to the floor apprehensively. She looked so distraught, as though this had been plaguing her mind for a while. Herschel cleared his throat and hummed thoughtfully under his breath. Well, I don't know much about good moms, but you've been a real good sister. Herschel laughed awkwardly, and Cecilia could help but smile a little as well. You pretty much single-handedly rescued me from that hell house and raised me into a decent, I think, person? I think you'll do fine with your, with your own kid. And you care. I love him, and you care. You love him so much. I'm sure the little guy will be happy just to have you as a mommy. Cecilia gently brushed her baby's head, a little more reassured. Thanks, Hirsch. I'll probably mess up a few times, but I'll do my best to give him a better childhood than, what we, than we ever had. It'll be a bumpy road, but I wouldn't trade this for anything. I'm going to do everything I can to raise him to be the happiest boy in the world. Oh. Little baby giggled in response and snuggled closely to his mom. There was determination in her eyes as she held him close and hummed contently into his ear. There was no doubt that she will do her child justice and probably spoil him, silly. Herschel's chuckle broke through their quiet, happy moment. Can't believe I'm an uncle now. I'm starting to feel old. I sure hope he doesn't pick up any of your bad habits as he grows up. I can barely deal with one of you. I can barely deal with one of you. Uncle Herschel will be the funnest uncle he will ever have. And don't get ahead of yourself. You still haven't named the little guy yet. You've been procrastinating on that for months. Cecilia spluttered nervously. I'm not good with names. How do parents even decide what to call their kids? There are too many options. And you keep telling me my ideas are dumb. So I'm trying to name your kid after cake, sis. I know you're a baker and all, but there's no way in hell I'm going to introduce my nephew as tiramisu. <laughs> but... Or eclair, or swiss, or sponge. Especially not fucking sponge. Cecilia mumbled begrudgingly to herself. It's a good cake. Your child is not a cake. Please, take this seriously. Cecilia paused, quiet for a few long moments as she gently brushed her child's hair. Her eyes suddenly lit up and she grinned. Cecil! Cecil! Ah! Mm, sorry, y'all. Herschel rolled, uh, hold, rolled, the word, rolled the word off his tongue as though, teasing, as though testing it how it sounded. Cecilia! Cecil! It's just your own name with a little L at it at the end. He'll grow up to be a lovable beauty like his mom. What's wrong with that? The VHS tape spluttered as static started fogging through the screen again. Second, y'all, it is Walker time. Cecilia's voice could still be heard whispering softly at her newly named child. I love you, Cecil. No matter what happens, just know that I'm so happy to have you with me. I hope I can be a good mom to you. The television powered down with a low whine as the video ended. The cottage was quiet and still. Cecil. Tears slowly fell from Cecil's cheeks and landed on his hands like a handed lap like little raindrops. He sniffed, his shoulders shaking as he tried to collect himself. Cecilia Bradley's warm voice still echoed in his head as he slowly wiped his eyes. I... I had a... mom! Cecil's heart lurched against his chest. All this time he thought his parents never cared for him. All those years he spent wandering the streets and feeling like unwanted trash. All this time, he had a mother who held him with such warmth and love? Mom. This felt like such a foreign word to him, but it was also something he desperately longed for. Cecil clutched his arms close to his chest and sobbed quietly to himself, alone in this abandoned cottage. Years of frustration, pain, and longing suddenly flooded out as he cried and cried and cried. Hmm. It took a while before he felt steady enough to stand up again. The sun was already falling low on the horizon when Cecil stepped outside the cabin's rotting doorframe. Remy followed him outside and glanced at him curiously. <clears throat> Are you feeling all right? Yeah, I'm still processing it all. It's a lot to take in. His head was still a mess of feelings he couldn't, couldn't quite make sense of. Everything just felt heavier, Cecil sighed. 
It's just, when I see my mom and Herschel being so happy in that video, I, c I can't help but think, why am I not there? I should be with them, together and happy with my family. But I'm still here alone in the woods. I still grew up on the streets without a home. Cecil clotted his chest in frustration and sighed. That video of his mother felt like such a fantasy. I wish I was there. Oh. I know where your mother is. Huh? I can take you to her. The remnant granite suddenly disappeared to the forest trail. Follow me. Wait up! Is this another ghostly life-changing discovery? Because I'm not sure if I'm ready. This will panic. Cecil swore si quietly under his breath and continued kicking around the lake bed aimlessly. If the damn ghost was going to ditch him like this, he might as well... Huh? He felt his toe brush against something hard and cold in the water. It was too solid to be another tree branch. Something about it felt strangely out of place in this lake. Ugh. Cecil took a deep breath before crouching down and fishing blindly in the muddy water. Oh, here we go! Oh. A flash of white made his heart jump in his chest. Out from the dark waters was the long, was the long silvery bone of an adult femur. Cecil immediately felt very nauseous. W what is this? You said I'd find where my mom... Realization hit him like a truck. He clamped his mouth shut as he felt sick, threatening to creep up his throat. This is what you wanted to show me? This can't mean what I think. There's gotta be something else. Why did you... Oh god. Yeah... The water suddenly erupted with dozens of dark, disembodied arms. Lake water sprayed everywhere as tendrils slithered through the waves like a mass of serpents. The remnant's cackling was unbearably loud as Cecil felt countless hands roughly grabbing at every part of him they could reach. He couldn't even scream before the arms dragged him down beneath the water's surface. Completely helpless, Cecil could do nothing as he felt himself being dragged deeper and deeper into the depths of Bradley Lake. And then, there was nothing. Only black. The skies were dark with gray as the rainstorm slowly grew overhead. The world felt like a blur as Ginny and I, as Ginny and I scrambled through Bradley, Bradley Woods in a breathless rush. Cecil always came here to calm down. He's got to be here. He has to be. My head felt drunk with anxiety as I ransacked every corner of the forest. There's still a chance we could find him before the remnant does, if we just hurry. Adrian! Over there! Ginny pointed to the distance. My stomach dropped at the sight of a familiar figure floating motionless in the lake. Ignoring Jenny's painful wheezing behind me, I made a mad dash towards it. My shoes were immediately soaked when I leaped into the water and desperately splashed my way to Cecil's prone, floating body. Panic was still coursing through my head as I pulled him over my shoulder and dragged him to the shore. Jenny was waiting for us there, panting and out of breath. He's not moving! What if... 
In spite of her exhausted state, Jenny held out her hand in forced composure. Stay calm. We can stay. We have to stay calm. It sounded more like she was speaking to herself than to me. Lay him down on his back on the shore. I know how to perform CPR. The, the basics, at least. In the meantime, get your phone and call for help. I closed my eyes, took a deep breath, and nodded. After gently settling Cecil into the sand, Jenny quickly leaned his... Jenny quickly leaned his head back to the clear his airway and pressed her face close, listening. Her face was grim. Her hands pressed around Cecil's cold neck and chest frantically before... Yeah, yeah, I paid a sigh of relief. He's still alive, not breathing normally, though. Chest compressions might... She muttered to herself as she traced both hands into the correct spot over the sternum and positioned herself over Cecil's unconscious body. Jenny counted out loud as she pushed down on Cecil's chest rhythmically. At around the eighth or ninth compression, Cecil's body abruptly spasmed and he lurched forward, belching out lake water and gasping for breath. Jenny and I were immediately by his side, gently patting his back as he choked out more water. His breath slowly steadied. Cecil immediate, Cecil, Cecil's head eventually fell back onto the sand and looked slightly more relaxed. Alright y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye